this is Mike again from mikesgoodstuff.com where I talk about good stuff and uh, give you all the good stuff going on that I that I happen to like. Um, I, so this is another video on um, Windows 10. Uh, I already did a previous video on the features that I like the most which are a lot of the multitasking features um, like the tasks, the task view, the ta uh, switching assist, or snap assist, the new quarter snap, and um, multiple desktops, uh, all of which are fantastic features. Today I'm going to talk about um, some of the customization features as well as uh, the new start menu, which uh, I know a lot of you people will enjoy. I didn't really mean that condescendingly. Anyway, um, so first of all, I'm going to go through a couple of um, UI things going on here. So, um, first of all, there's this search button down here. Um, I, I just wanted to point it out because it's kind of weird at the moment. I don't, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I, 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 I suppose that this is designed for touch environments, as um, as I alluded to another in the previous video. Uh, none of these three buttons on your taskbar can actually be removed at the moment, even if you're on a mouse and keyboard. And uh, they're positioned in such a way that it seems like it's designed for, for touch. Thus the, the task view, which um, replaces the typical s swipe from the from the left with your finger on, on touch interfaces to um, switch apps. Um, and but yeah, so the, but there's also this search button. I guess it's it's kind of handy because it allows you to just do a web search real quick, I guess. Um, but let's just demonstrate it real quick. If you do stuff, it brings up this little search box and it goes straight to a Bing search um, in this little search box window here. Um, so I mean, that's really all it does right now. Is it just it's just a straight Bing search. Um, Kind of the same way that there's that uh that uh well there's that search icon on um, on Windows Phone. Um, that's a normally a capacitive key. You hit the the search button, and uh, what it used to do prior to Windows Phone 8.1 is that it would go to a Bing search like this. Um, this is where I'm I'm kind of thinking. I mean I have no evidence to support this, but. Um, I mean, we know that there are plenty of Cortana references in the code for Windows 10, and there's a lot of rumors saying that Cortana will be coming to Windows 10, as you know, would make sense. Uh, if you don't know, by the way, Cortana is Microsoft's uh, search assistant. I, I've got to imagine that this will eventually become Cortana. Uh, this this search button here, because right now it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. Show some basic Bing stuff. These are just like the trending stories on Bing. Um, you have a very basic recent searches thing here. The set settings button doesn't really go too much except for you can clear your search history, you can change how uh, Microsoft tailors um, stuff for you. Um, you know, how, um, how Bing works on metered connections and stuff like that. I, there's not there's not much going on here, so this is a very strange button. But then again, this is this is a very early stage for Windows 10. It's a um, it's, I mean, pretty much a beta. So we know there's no Cortana fe uh, functionality here whatsoever. But I imagine this has got to become Cortana eventually. That just makes sense because that's that's exactly how it works with Windows Phone. There's a little search button. Um, on the the bottom right of the phone, you hit that, and uh, that will bring up Cortana. So um, it'd be kind of cool, actually, if uh, if a long press on here or a uh, like a right click or something like that would be able to open up the the voice dialog like a long press on uh, Windows Phone does. But anyway, so I just want to point that out. That's it's kind of weird. Um, it's not really anything right now, but uh, we'll find out. We'll find out later as uh, as they add more consumery stuff to it. Um, probably in February. So, um, second of all, uh, there's uh, they've done a lot in the interface to make everything 
a bit more, let's say, consistent. Like they have, I mean, the, this stuff is all the same here, um, but um, your your apps, see how it, it does differentiate the modern apps and the desktop apps with with uh, it always having a color on the bottom. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't, but um, but it it's got this lighter color for the for the text. So there's some differentiation there to to make you aware of what it is. But um, your modern apps and your desktop apps open the same the same way are for the most part um, given the same rules as far as snapping is considered. Um, except that they can only snap that far um, versus a regular desktop app which can uh, let's see let's get that one off for a second which can do a full quarter snap but um but I'm sure as a lot of you will probably complain this this is still this is still very much modernized uh, metroized as, as you can say it's uh, it doesn't come up with a dialog box as it normally would. Um, so I don't know if they're gonna if they're planning on making this more desktop-ish or changing the interface in any way. Um, but that's one thing that's, that was a complaint that that won't be resolved. But well, without further ado, let's go into the start menu. Um, obviously, this is a very Windows 8 start button, um, but when you click it. Um, and uh, it, if you're when you're on a a desktop keyboard mouse based display or a Surface Pro something that's uh, that's more you know actual computer based rather than a tablet or phone or something like that um, this this start menu will pop up um, and of course this is a uh, very much start menu ish um, but it's been retooled now I I want to I want to make a caveat and say that. I was never really in the camp that um, that preferred the start menu over the start screen. I actually preferred the customization, the extensibility of the start screen, and um, how much you could do with it. And uh, the full screen part of the start screen never really bothered me that much. It never seemed that distracting. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, this isn't the most mind-blowing feature to me, but I, I appreciate it because as much as Microsoft has been derided for going back one step by bringing the start menu back, they haven't. They haven't actually gone back a step at all. They they basically ta took the design language of the, the start screen and tailored it into something that was more familiar, that people and people liked more, uh, which is this, this start screen to, slash or uh, type experience. But um or but the, the start menu if you remember from Windows 7 and uh, previous versions, was was fairly static. I mean, you could do things like you can pin something to uh, to it. Um, you could, to a certain extent, customize some of the stuff over here, but generally not. You normally had like your control panel and documents on whatever. You just had a very static set of icons here. You had your all applications down here. You had your power settings down here. It was all it was very static. Um, and for that matter, it was um, only it was only one size. So um, there's a very limited amount of information that you could get there. Um, this is this start start menu is actually a lot better um, because well first of all you can resize it you can make it a little bigger if you want a little bit smaller um, you have uh, live live tiles over here um, which obviously come from Windows 8 and um, there's not a whole lot of live tile-ness going on here um, but here you can put literally anything, any shortcut to any application that you want. You can put, I don't know, Windows PowerShell here for, you know, if, if you want to, I guess. Um, but uh, and of course you can you can resize them too. You can make them smaller like this, medium. Um, the live tiles, uh, some of them have the ability to go wide or large. 
So you have a big old view here, and you can see, um, you know, I've got a couple events in here. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that's what a, what a live tile will typically do if you haven't run into Windows 8 before, is it, it will actually um, update you on some information that you have going on um, or stuff that's going on the app. Typically Next Gen Reader, it's not doing it right now, but typically Next Gen Reader will, will give you um, pictures of news articles that are coming on, some headlines and stuff like that. So that's typically what you'd be what you'd be expecting with a live tile. Um, as with Windows 7, you can also just use it to just put application links or whatever if you want to. You can put the control panel there. Um, for that matter, if you don't, uh, you notice the power options are up here now instead of down here. If you don't like this, you can actually put a shortcut to power options down here too if you want to. So it's very customizable. You can do, you can put everything, anything you want here, or you can even put nothing. We, uh, I mean, there's a there's a strict size that this stuff needs to that this stuff needs to be, but I mean, you can get rid of everything here for a second. Look at that. That's a start menu but actually smaller than the previous start menus. You don't have anything over here, but you still have your documents, your pictures, file explorer, whatever you want here. Uh, recent recent photos and stuff like that. I mean, or recent uh, stuff. Uh, so, I mean, you can do this even if you want. Very minimal start screen. Um, all, you have, all you need to do if you want to pin something back to it is first of all get out of that list. You just drag it over here and I'll throw it in there. Now if we start dragging a few other things here, uh, let's see, I don't think I can make that stuff bigger or smaller. Just add some random stuff in here. Alarms, reading list, but uh, as you can see, you, this can actually get quite a bit bigger as well. See how much, see how much this, how far out this can go. Now you'll notice you can't actually drag this out. Um, that's a, that's a little disappointing, but it's not too big of a deal. Uh, I'm running out of stuff on here. I mean, you can go out. Uh, can I make this wider? Nope. Let's keep going. Mail. Let's make that bigger. Large size. Maps. Wide tile. I mean, this. I've actually uh, never made it this big before, so to see how far this can actually go. <laughs> yeah, you can actually make a full start screen out of this thing. You see this? That is nuts. <laughs> I mean, you you've got tons of apps there. You, and then you, you bring it up bring it up this far. I mean you can't obviously you can't go you can't go f let's see. Yeah, I mean this is as far as this will go up. But um and then it will start scrolling off to the right. But you can make a pretty massive little start menu here if you want to. I don't expect a lot of people that are using the start menu will will even will do this, but having the option is pretty cool. Um if you were one of the the people that like me uh, that Joe Belfiore uh, called out during the conference, uh, people that actually liked Windows 8, there is a way to bring it back to the start screen, and I will I will show you that later. But um, but yeah, I mean, fully extensible. Um, and as the operating system gets updated, and as apps get updated as well. There's going to be a lot more live tell action going on here. I don't have a lot of this stuff set up um, with personal information uh, for various reasons, but um, if I did, there'd be like mail popping up here. Music would show you like the music that I've been listening to. Reading list will show you some stuff. Maps. I mean, you'll get a lot of information from all of this stuff. So, um, and also, uh, You'll notice this here, search everywhere. This still works like it did in Windows 7, except it does more. And in fact, you can still hit the start key, as I'm doing right now, 
and bring it up and, and back. And so if you're looking for, say, Notepad, you can do Start, Notepad, and it'll pop up Notepad. Now notice that there's there's a few things that it that it throws in here extra. Notepad and Sticky Notes are installed on the computer, um, but it also does a search through the store, through the App Store, to find other apps that that sync up with your uh, with with your search here. So there's some other notepads. So if I click on this, it'll go into the store, which of course opens up Windowed, even though it is a, a live or even though it is a modern app. Um, and then it, it shows you, aha, this is this app that you can install. So that increases discoverability dramatically, and that's going to make a lot of app developers very happy because. I mean, I can I can imagine the majority of people that used Windows 8 did not go into this little icon. Even when with Windows 8.1, Microsoft forced the icon on the the taskbar and so that you had to remove it. Otherwise, I mean, it's just sticking there forever, just to to try to try to create visibility. This I think does the best job of any to create visibility for the App Store and the apps that are in the store and hopefully to attract developers to the App Store because that's really what um, Windows 10 is going to need um, to succeed as, a, as an app model is they need, they need developers to write apps. The other thing that shows is, uh, word, or is uh, internet browsing searches. So this, this basically shows, this is uh, the most common results that have to do with note or the most common searches that have to do with Notepad, um, and then you can choose this to show all results. Results, sorry, and this will actually open up in that search app that I showed you earlier. Um, so this this is a modern app. It's odd because it's, it's kind of Internet Explorer-ish, but very simplified. Um, once again, I imagining that this is going to get replaced with Cortana and that will make this experience right here way better. Cortana on Windows Phone is amazing, fantastic, and I would love to see Cortana be thrown into uh, Windows or Windows 10 to replace this hunk of whatever, this, this you know, very simple and kind of pointless app. I, I would actually, I mean, rather than use that, I would rather go to just Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome or whatever. I'd, I'd much rather do that than use this this stupid thing, um, unless it becomes Cortana, because then it then it becomes way cooler. Um, okay, so there's also a couple um, things you can do to customize the start screen or start menu. I'm sorry, that was a uh, Freudian Freudian slip, I believe. Um, if you right click on the, the start menu. You've got a couple things here, personalized and properties. Um, if you've been around Windows 7 uh, or Windows 8, you'll know what personalized means. It's basically a, like a, um, it's basically, well, personalization. You get to change the aesthetics of the start screen or start menu. So all this really does currently is um, show you the the color of your of your taskbar, your Windows borders, and start menu. It doesn't allow you to change one of these. It, it makes you do all of them. Um, this is like a white, like a clear color, which looks gray on the start menu. Um, I kind of wish that there was a. Let me see. If we do this, this color and play with this color intensity here. It still makes it gray, so that's that's a little annoying. But uh, but yeah, so we'll put it back to green. Save changes. I like green. Green's a, a cool color. Um, the other option in here um, also is the properties, and this gives you the ability to play around with your typical stuff here, like you know, use peak to preview the desktop when you move your mouse. To, to the show desktop button at the end of the taskbar. That's this thing over here. So that will that will peek through the desktop. Um, we all like this. This combine this comes auto checked, so whatever. Um, navigation. Um, a lot of 
a lot of people who've played around with this will know that what this stuff is. Um, show start on the display when you use the the Windows logo. Um, the I guess this is disabled mainly because this is a mouse and keyboard display and not a touch device. Um, but yeah, this was a uh, this is used to be a thing in Windows 8 where if you closed all your all of your modern apps, then it'll go straight to the desktop. Um, that's not a thing anymore. Um, there is no environment other than the desktop. Your modern apps run in the desktop, so it's weird that this option's still there, but then again, this is a very early build. They'll probably just clean all this crap up later. Um, this is a, an interesting one too, which has been around for a while, but uh, if you prefer Windows PowerShell, um, then you can you can replace Command Prompt with Windows PowerShell when you press Windows X or uh, click the right hand, or uh, click the lower left corner. Um, and so here is where you change to the start screen, should you want to. Uh, as I demonstrated, the start menu, you can't go all the way up, you can't go all the way to the side, you, you don't have a traditional start screen um, like you did in Windows 8. If you like that start screen, that is still an option. And I, I do appreciate that that is an option. I'm, I do like, I'm okay with the start menu, as much as I kind of bash the start menu before, just how kind of worthless it was, like, I, I'm okay with it. Um, it's very customizable, it's very powerful, and uh, it's not bad. I mean, I, I'm kind of on the fence about it at the moment. I, I'm not really sure which way I'll go, but if anything, you, we have the option, and it's good. Uh, you're also uh, down here, store and display recently opened event uh, programs as well as uh, items. So your recent stuff will show up in the start menu. We all like that. You can also clear your personal info from your from your tiles apparently. Um, jump lists have also come back. Uh, that was the thing that actually got um, cleared off of Windows 8. Uh, that was a big feature in Windows 7. That's part of the recent items and stuff like that. Um, so when you when you look at I don't have anything that's gonna have a jump list but um, but you'll have this stuff up here which is your most recent things that uh uh, that you've opened with that particular program. But uh, just for the sake of argument, let's show you, um, let's just revert to this, uh, to the start screen instead of the start menu, and I'll, I'll show you that. Unfortunately, you do have to sign out um, and sign back in in order to make it work. It's, it's actually a Apparently that hard coded in that it um, it needs to completely restart Explorer.exe in order to change your your start screen to start menu. So uh, I'm gonna pause this real quick and we will uh, and I'll get back to you. All right, and we're back. We uh, just changed over the start menu to start screen. So when I hit this button now, uh, you get this, which Honestly, on this 1366 by 768 screen, just looks awful. I'm, I, I wouldn't use a start screen on this display if given the option, the opportunity. Um, but this isn't my main production device. I, I'd much rather use something with a higher resolution than this um, in my day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, I have a, I, I do have a Surface 2, which runs a 1080 display on a 10-inch screen. Um, that I have all of this set to high density, and that works perfectly fine for me. I'm totally fine with the, the start screen being on there. Um, so, you now what they do with Windows RT is another question, but um, on my desktop, I would probably use, I'd probably still use the start screen personally. Um, maybe not. I might play around with it and decide. But the thing is, you have the option to do so. And you, of course, still have the same options uh, with that came with Windows 8.1, where I have it set to automatically show my background instead of the, you know, those weird, uh, these weird things, these, like this stuff. Um, 
this is where like yeah okay I can see how that can that can be a little jarring um, but actually if you go into the properties here just like we did before with the start menu um, there it is under navigation show my desktop background on start um, so that's interesting this did actually pop up so apparently when you're using the start screen this stuff still pops up so I guess instead of going to the start screen it just goes straight to the desktop um, I guess that's that's what that is still an odd feature for still an odd, uh, an odd thing to put in there you think it would just go to whatever um, they're still using this as your desk or this uh, start screen as your destination um, instead of the desktop. Uh, the, I guess the fact that this is auto enabled is a, is a good sign in that case. Um, and oh, this is this is a cool feature too. If you're using a, um, a multi monitor setup and you're using the start screen, then um, when you press the Windows key. Um, or this thing, it'll show up on the, the screen that you're currently using. Um, show the apps view automatically. Uh, this, a lot of people liked as a 8.1 feature, which shows you your all apps view, so it's kind of start start menu-ish. Um, I don't think a lot of people are going to be using that. If, you're, if you want this, you're probably going to want to go with the start menu anyway. <coughs> um, so I mean a lot of that stuff is still there in any case but let's go let's hit that option show my desktop background on start and voila it's not quite as jarring the fact of the matter is though since they made the taskbar permanent it kinda gets in the way um, once again I'm sure Microsoft is looking for testing on this because you have to click on the start screen in order to get the scroll bar and I suppose like if you bring this up you can see well my mouse drivers aren't working as well as it could be but I suppose you could scroll if you had a mouse with a scroll wheel like this and I suppose you do that anyway um, but I would imagine if you're using this environment you probably got a touch screen monitor so I guess it doesn't really matter in the end but this thing gets in the way of the scroll bar and so I, I'd almost rather them just get rid of the score bar, scroll bar or something or at least uh, I don't know do something with that that's just weird so that's all that stuff um, and uh, that is what we know of Windows 10 so far. Um, there's also um, and there's a few things that uh, I'm hoping they kind of clean up like like these modern app settings are just like re somehow a little redundant. Um, we do have we still have the control panel in here so not everything is as um, fluid as it could be but once again this is very early operating system so I'm looking forward to seeing maybe they'll clean some of that stuff up a little bit make it a little bit uh, a little bit more consistent by the way we also still have right click um, and this is your mm, god mode so to speak uh, you remember if you remember that from uh, Windows XP days uh, where you, you, you had a a button you could put on your desktop that has all this the stuff for uh, people who like to get in the nitty-gritty of their computers you get programs and features power options uh, control panel task manager command prompt um, ad admin version of command prompt disk management all the people all the things that very techy people like to have um, that's actually one of the the more under appreciated features of Windows 8 that you can right click on the start and get all of this right here and that's and for that matter you can get shut down right here too it's one of the things that people I think forgot were there but it's one of the features I use all the time if anything to get to control panel as I always need to get to um, 
So that's still there, which I which I appreciate. Um, and uh, the one final thing I guess I will show you, um, which I know some people will be happy about. If we go to command prompt here real quick. Um, so Joe B Joe Belfiore demonstrated this probably a little better than I can, but um, let's see here. We type in something in here. Let's see, let's go into ah, it's not working on on here. Maybe it's a PowerShell <sighs> on stage. They yeah, it's not on stage. They actually demonstrated ah wait. It worked there. Okay, well that's interesting. There it is. Okay, so um, on stage they they did demonstrate copy paste in command prompt. Um, I don't know why it hasn't been in command prompt for so long. It's really annoying. Whenever I need to go into command prompt, I I need to have a window side to side with the command prompt so I can you know type in my you know mounting whatever. Yeah, you know. I'm not. I don't use command prompt a lot, but when I do, it's it's nice to have. Um, but uh, supposedly you can you can copy inf information out of it too. But yeah, it, the the keyboard commands don't work. Control Control V Control C. You have to right click, paste, um, mark, scroll. Uh, this is this is going to be really helpful for a lot of people though. Um, the ability to find things within a command prompt. Uh, you, you know, you have a whole bunch of stuff down here and you're scrolling trying to find something, you know, being able to, f to find stuff in there is going to be really helpful. Um, not a real big feature. I don't know why they haven't added it for so long, but <laughs> it's there. Anyway, that's the last thing I was going to, I was going to demonstrate on here. Um, that's, that's about it for what's on Windows 10 at the moment. Um, that's as of build 9841. Um, not a lot of features being demonstrated. This was a, a supposedly an enterprise focused build, um, early build, just to tell, you know, enterprises and businesses that yes, we are listening to you and yes, we are making a product that will, that you will like more. Um, Interestingly enough, they didn't really talk much about enterprise stuff, um, like security. Some of the security stuff came out, came out a little later, but I'm not going to talk about that much, mostly because I don't understand it and I don't really, you know, consider um, enterprise level security all that much in my day to day life. Um, but that's, but like I said, the main thing that that they're demonstrating is a start screen, the task switcher, and de and desktops. Um, and some of the the UI redesigns that they they've done and button designs stuff like that. So I'll be looking forward to seeing out seeing what kind of new features they release in the future. Um, I would imagine if anything they're going to have a new build out by uh, February when when their consumer conference is going on. They'll probably have more inf more stuff out in April for build. Uh, they might have even have more stuff out for next month, which uh, they're planning on doing a. A developer conference then so maybe some of the APIs uh, Visual Studio some of that stuff will will get demonstrated um, I don't know but in any case I'll be posting videos uh, demonstrating some of these features when I do run into them when I do hear about them and so um, keep tuned on mikesgoodstuff.com and on this YouTube channel and um, thank you for watching